We're in a series on the fruit of the Spirit. This is based in Galatians chapter 5. Verse 22 and 23 gives us nine fruit of the Spirit. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. We've covered those three. Today we're going to look at long-suffering or patience. That song, I noticed Sam had picked out that song about the love, joy, and peace like a river. I thought, well, we need to add uh, patience to that and sing about that. But you notice, it, it, being, being the conscientious songwriter that I am, you notice I didn't say we got patience, we need patience, right? We need patience. I think all of us could stand a little more patience in our life. So we're going to talk this morning about the perfect work of patience. Are you a patient person? Is that something that defines you? What if we ask your spouse, what would they say? What if we ask your children or your co-workers, how patient are we with others? You want to take a test? Y'all love taking tests, right? right? Let's take a test and just see how patient you really are. How do you deal with interruptions? When you're busy doing something and, and you're trying to get this done and somebody interrupts you, how do you react to that? Or how about irritations? Do certain things bug you? Cold food, long lines, inept clerks? How about inconveniences? When you're inconvenienced, we're living in a day and time, we want fast food, we want express lines, we want instant coffee, we want it now, not later, right? I read somewhere that the urban dweller, those who live in cities, will spend six months of his life waiting on red lights. If you added it all up, the time you're sitting there waiting on a red light, it would be about six months of your life is spent that way. Right? And if the guy in front of you doesn't move in three seconds when it turns green, you turn red, right? How do you deal with inconveniences? How about incapacities? When you are incapacitated by bad health, or maybe in business or whatever. How about imponderables? Had to be another I, right? Things you just have trouble understanding. Do any of these things cause you to be impatient? Well, if so, I've got good news for you. I'm going to help you out today. I'm going to help you how to learn to have a little more patience. If you didn't do too good on that test, then uh, I think I can help you out. We said back in Romans 5, 3, tribulation worketh patience. How many of you pray for patience? Raise your hand. You pray for patience. How many of you quit praying for patience when you found out that tribulation works patience? See, that's when I quit. We want the patience, but we don't want the tribulation. Right? But tribulation not only works patience, it reveals impatience. Tribulation reveals impatience, but it can grow patience. See, we need to look at these things, the, the interruptions and the irritations. Don't look at that so much as obstacles, but look at them as opportunities. See, God's giving us opportunities to grow patience. Go to James. James chapter 1. We just finished a study of James, but we're going to go back for a little more here. If you'll stand with me if you're physically able... Our text today is going to come out of the book of James, chapter 1, and verses 3 and 4. James says, verse 3, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect 
and entire wanting nothing. So we're going to talk about the perfect work of patience. You may be seated. If you want to take notes, if you look in your program, if you're visiting with us, uh, if you'll note in your Sunday program, there's a place uh, for filling in the blanks on the outline we're going to look at this morning. Very simple outline. We're going to talk about, first of all, what patience is. What is patience? Let me give you the negative first. It is not being passive. That's not what we're talking about. It, it's not just ability to put up with things or to endure pain and suffering. It's, it's more than that. It's not just passively enduring something. But we're going to talk about the spirit that bears things. Not with resignation, hey, but with blazing hope. To bear things with blazing hope. It's the spirit that bears things knowing that it's going to lead to a certain goal. That God is using this, God is working all of this out. It's not grimly waiting for the end to come. But it's being able to hope for the dawn. The dawn is coming. One night, Brother Matt stayed up all night wondering where the sun went, and finally it dawned on him. If you wait, it will dawn on you. And that's, what the, that's the idea here. Knowing that whatever befalls me, Jesus doeth all things well. He's going to work it out. So it's not just being passive, but it is being purposeful. Does it, does it not take patience to learn something? I bought a harmonica a while back. I was watching the Gaither Homecomings and Buddy Green. Boy, he gets down to that harmonica. I thought, man, I bet I could learn to play like that. And I went out and bought me a cheap harmonica. I thought I'd work my way up to the good one. But I found out something. I don't have the air to do that. Boy, you've got to have some lungs to, to blow it. Because it's not only blowing, you've got to suck and blow and suck. And I couldn't do it. I didn't have the patience to do it, seriously. I probably could have done it a little bit, but I did not have the patience to stay with it. How many of y'all started on a musical instrument, maybe the piano or the trumpet or something, but you didn't have the patience to stay with it? See, if you're going to learn something, you've got to have patience. You've got to stay with it. If you don't learn patience, you're going to be a failure. I'm a failure when it came to the harmonica. I admit it. See, a failure is somebody who quits. Amen? A failure is somebody who quits. You could be running a race, and you could be well ahead of everybody else, but if you quit, you fail. Doesn't matter how far ahead you were. You quit, and everybody passed you. So we've got to learn to endure. We've got to learn never to quit. Without patience, without endurance, without long-suffering, we will fail time and time again. So patience speaks of this. It speaks of obedience because it's connected to doing God's will. Let me give you a verse. Hebrews 10, 36. Hebrews 10, 36. For ye have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Why do we need patience? To do the will of God. That we might be obedient to God's word and to God's command. So that's what patience is. Secondly, let's think about what patience does. What patience does. Four things I want to share with you here. First of all, it will bring maturity. Back in James 1, 3, and 4, talks about patience and having her perfect work where we can be perfect and entire. And that's the idea of being mature. As we grow 
in our Christian life, we become more mature as a Christian. We become full grown. The fruit of the Spirit and the, the graces of the Spirit are going to be more evident in our lives as we grow. People will see Christ in us. That's the goal, isn't it? Don't you want people to see Christ in you? Working in you, living through you. That is how we triumph in this life. To have perfect peace and tranquility. This comes through patience. The testing of our faith worketh patience. We must let patience have her perfect work. Because, hey, there's not going to be any maturity without it. We've got to have this. God wants to bring us to the fullness of Christ Jesus. How does he do that? He allows tribulations and troubles and trials to come into your life that you might learn patience. God wants to bring you to that perfect, that complete state. Think about our, our children patient. Are your children patient? They want it now, don't they? They don't know the difference between no and not yet. They've never figured that out. That's just a, a small child is just that way. They are very impatient. They don't understand why they have to wait. But we can be childish that way, can't we? We add those. There's a Danish proverb that goes like this. says, give to a pig when it grunts and give to a child when it cries. You'll have a fine pig and a spoiled child. Solomon didn't come up with that, but I think we see it, don't we? Well, you said, now, preacher, if tribulation worketh patience, I think I can learn to live being impatient. I don't want to suffer. I don't want to have any problems. I want to have the honey but no bees. Well, if that's the case, you're never going to be a strong, mature Christian. This is something... That is going to come. Tribulation produces patience, and that will bring maturity. You're going to face difficulties. Some of you are facing them right now, aren't you? Some of you are going through the trial. Uh, Matt preached last Sunday about uh, needing to be able to go through the storms of life and, and having that peace that passes understanding. We all go through these difficult times. God knows that, and God's trying to help us know how to deal with the trials and tribulations that will come along. How do you face it? You spend a lot of time in prayer, don't you? Let me give you a little, a little hint here, a little tip. When you're going through hard times, I don't think you should so much ask God to remove the hard times as to ask God to help you get through it. In other words, ask God to give you wisdom to deal with this, to give you patience to deal with this. All the things we're talking about that can help us endure the troubled times that are going to come into our life. It brings maturity. Secondly, patience brings victory. It brings victory. If you're still in James chapter 1, look down at verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. You see that? When you're enduring temptation patiently, that can be a blessed thing. That word endureth refers to patience. Not so much is he talking about the crowns that are awaiting us in heaven, but talking about the crowns for faithful service here in this life. Hey, folks, we can rule and reign in this life. We don't have to wait for the next life. We can enjoy that in this life. Having the power of God in our lives and being victors in this life, not victims. 
We've got too many victims today. They're living a defeated life because they're not strong in their faith. 2 Corinthians 2.14 says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Is that true of your life? Did you say that? That I always triumph in Christ? Whatever trials or tribulations come my way, I've learned how to endure and not quit. Last night, the dirty Tar Heels beat my Razorback. I wonder, what is, where did that come from, Tar Heels? I had to look it up. Because if I was going to bad mouth them, I wouldn't know what I'm talking about. So There's actually different ideas about where Tar Heels, the North Carolina Tar Heels, but the most common one accepted goes back to the Civil War. Or the war of northern aggression. It just depends on what side you're on. But back then, there was a battle, and the Confederate army broke and ran, except the North Carolina regiment. They stayed and fought. Later on, when they got back to these other guys, they said, you know what? We need to put some tar on you guys. Put tar on your heels so you can learn how to stick in a fight and not run. And so the North Carolina boys started being called the Tar Heels. I guess there's a lot of tar in North Carolina. Well, I'll tell you what, we need to be Tar Heels. We need to learn how to stick. Be steadfast, endure, and not run. Not quit, not fail. Hey, this can bring victory into your life. Look at Proverbs 25, 28. Here it says, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down without walls. Now back in those days, uh, all the major cities had walls of protection. And when the walls broken down, then they were in danger. The protection had been taken away. The idea here is, if you don't rule over your own spirit, you're in danger. You need to learn patience so that you can rule over your spirit. That you can have control when these times come along. See, if you have no patience, you're going to fall. You're going to be defeated. This fruit of the spirit is building a wall of protection around your life. Now, we've talked about sometimes... God sends trials and tribulations. Sometimes he lets the devil do it, right? Job, talking about having the patience with Job. You know the story of Job, how God allowed Satan to attack Job. Now you might say, well, preacher, how do I know whether it's God or the devil that's putting this trouble in my life? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You respond the same either way. Amen? You endure. You are patient. You're long-suffering. All the things we've been talking about, this ought to be in your life. It doesn't matter where the trouble came from. You still deal with it the same way. God will see us through. And the last thing the devil wants you to do is praise God in times of trouble. So that's how Job defeated the devil. Job continued to praise God in spite of everything he was going through. He lost his wealth, he lost his health, he lost his children. Yet he refused to be bitter against God. He praised God and defeated the devil. That's what we've got to do. Number three, it brings prosperity. If you're in James, go to James chapter 5. James has a lot to say about patience. James chapter 5, look at verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, to the coming of the Lord. Behold the husbandman. He's going to give an illustration here about patience. 
Behold, the husbandman or the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, has long patience for it until he receives the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draws nigh. Are you getting impatient with the second coming? I never dreamed we would make it this far. 2015, and the Lord hasn't come. Man, when I started preaching 30-something years ago, I thought it was going to be any day. I can't believe he's waited this long. He's testing our patience, isn't he? Now, I don't doubt he's coming at all. We're closer now than we've ever been. He's coming. And I still believe it's going to be soon. But he says, here's the farmer. He plants his seed. Now he's got to patiently wait for the crop to come up. The crop's not going to come up overnight, is it? He's got to wait. He's got to be patient. If he goes up... If he goes out there and digs up the seed every day to look at it, nothing's going to happen. He's got to leave it there and let it alone and let it do its work. Now, folks, the same is true. We've got to let God do his work. We've got to learn how to be patient and let God work and fulfill his plan. Galatians 6, 9 says, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not, if we don't quit. We come back to quitting again, don't we? Hey, we've got a lot of quitters in churches today. There's a lot of, hey, there's a lot of folks used to sit in those pews. They're not here because they quit. They quit. Don't you be a quitter. When the trials and tribulations come, don't let that cause you to stop or quit. Be steadfast. Be a Tar Heel. Stay in there. Learn endurance. The, the, the farmer plants his seeds. He waits for the rains to come. Just like we need to wait on the Lord. Sometimes the Lord, to us, he's delaying. But folks, delays are not denials. When you pray, you ever pray and God just answers immediately? Well, we like that, don't we? That's, that's wonderful when God does that. When you pray and, and immediately God answers. But what about those times when he doesn't answer quickly? When you pray and pray and pray and wait and wait and wait and you wonder why God doesn't answer. Well, maybe he's trying to grow some patience in you. Maybe he's waiting so that you can grow more in your Christian walk. Maybe it's not time for the harvest in your life. Amen? Maybe it's not time, and you need to wait for God's perfect time. I read about a mission work in India that was started in the mid-1800s. It was the only fundamental church in India at that time. They called it the Lone Star of India, this mission work. After 15 years, they only had 10 converts. The sponsors of this mission were ready to close it down as a failure. But one man, a man by the name of Samuel Smith, and by the way, he's the one that wrote My Country Tis of Thee. He spoke against shutting this down. He said, I just feel like if we'll be patient, God will work. So they decided to keep it going. Thirty years later, that church had 15,000 members. What if they'd shut it down? What would have happened to those 15,000 people? In due season, we shall reap if we faint not. 
Then fourthly, it brings tranquility. James chapter 5, look at verse 10. Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. You have heard the patience of Job. We even sang about it today, didn't we? And have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Folks, there's no tranquility. There's no happiness without patience. Is the impatient person happy? No, he's not. We count them happy, which know how to endure, which can be patient. We've already talked about joy. When our joy is in the Lord, then circumstances cannot take it away. The world does not give us joy. The world cannot take it away. It comes from the Lord. Joy. And I know there's some things you're going through that's no laughing matter. I understand that. There's things we have to endure. But still, it does not have to rob us of our joy. Not if our joy is in the Lord. I mean, there's just some things we can't change. How many of you have to fight the traffic to go to work every day, going up to BA? I hate to have to go into Tulsa during the rush hour. I try to work around that. Because traffic gets jammed up and you're all lined up bumper to bumper. Next time you're in one of those just look at the faces of the people. See how much joy you see. You don't see much happiness, do you? They lost their joy. But you know what? You can't change it. You might as well sit there and read your Bible or pray or witness to the guy in the car next to you. You know, do something to make it profitable and learn how to deal with these things with patience. Have the patience of Job. Like I said, Satan tried to defeat Job. He took everything he had, but he couldn't take the joy of the Lord. And Job just went on praising God and defeated the devil. Last thought is this. Let's think about what patience has. What patience has. We're going to go back to the sequence here. We've been studying the fruit of the Spirit, <clears throat> talking about the peace, love, and joy. That's what patience has. It has those three things. There, there's kind of a sequence here building up. Patience has love. It has love. They go together, don't they? Now, it's not by accident that love, joy, peace will bring patience. Because patience really is a composite of these three things. Let me show you. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 says love suffers long. Love is long suffering. Love is patient. Impatience shows a lack of love. See, Paul beseeched the believers in Ephesians 4, 2. He said, walk worthy with all lowliness and meekness with long suffering forbearing one another in love. See how it works together? An impatient person is self-centered. The impatient person is thinking only about his need and his desires and his time and his things. It has love. Secondly, it has joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. We need this strength to endure tribulation and trials. These trials don't have to make you hateful. They don't have to make you spiteful. You don't have to act nasty and rude when things are not going your way. See, joy is misplaced when that happens. Do you have a good sense of humor? I once had a lady that criticized me for using too much humor in my preaching. She said, a preacher ought to be serious. You don't need to be up there telling jokes and trying to be funny. 
I said, sister, if you, knew, if you only knew how much I restrained myself, you would praise me. Hey, if you've got the joy of the Lord, won't that come out? I don't think a, a church service ought to be like a funeral service every Sunday. I don't think there's anything wrong with us getting together and smiling and laughing and having a good time. Don't you think God likes to see his children laugh? Don't you like to see your children laugh and have a good time? I've got an aunt who is a very joyful person. And she laughs about everything. She sees something funny and everything. And what's odd is she's a preacher's wife. I mean, if she's got every reason to be downcast and sad. But I love to be around Aunt Mary. She is such a joyful person. And she's patient. It just goes together. And number three, it has peace. Patience has peace peace as I said the impatient person really doesn't have that peace there's turmoil going on impatience robs them of that inner peace they come together don't they so when you mature as a Christian you have the peace of God in your life you know how to be patiently enduring the hardships that come along when you pray Maybe it doesn't happen immediately, but because you've got patience, you can wait on God to act. Let me remind you again, timing is more important to God than time. You understand that? Timing is more important than time. God's waiting for the right time. When did he send his son to this earth? in the fullness of time. He waited 4,000 years to send Jesus. But at the right time, he sent him. At the perfect time, the Lord came. So learn to wait. Learn to be patient. As the psalmist said, Psalm 130, verse 6, My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. Isaiah 30, 18. This is an interesting verse. Isaiah 30, 18 says, Therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you. Now, think about that. Therefore will the Lord wait. It doesn't say, therefore will the Lord hurry that he may be gracious. He'll wait. Timing. He's waiting for the right time to work in your life and, and, and to do what you may be praying for. Talk about the sunrise. There's two things about the sunrise. Two facts about the sunrise. Number one, you can't hurry it. And number two, you can't stop it. Amen? Amen? And you can't hurry God, nor can you stop God. When God's ready to act, nobody can stop him. So cultivate, folks, the fruit of patience, endurance, and long-suffering in your life. Amen? You ever been to a fruit factory where they manufacture fruit? The preacher's no such thing as a fruit factory. Now, there's factories that make artificial fruit. But there's no fruit factory. You don't manufacture fruit, you grow fruit. You go to a fruit orchard, but not to a fruit factory. So what do you mean? I'm saying we cannot manufacture this. We can only grow this. The fruit of the Spirit is something He does, not something we do. But you've got to allow him to do this. You cannot grow bananas in Alaska. You'll never bear the fruit of the Spirit unless you walk in the Spirit. 
be filled with the Spirit. Galatians 5, 24, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. You're never a failure till you quit. Don't quit. Have patience. Abide in Christ. Walk in the Spirit. Let Him produce His fruit in you. As we stand together, we prepare for a hymn of invitation. Now, before you can bear the fruit of the Spirit, you've got to have the Holy Spirit indwelling you, and that only comes by being saved. When you accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and Savior, then the Holy Spirit comes in. Now the Holy Spirit is indwelling you, and He will begin to produce His fruit in you as you walk in the Spirit, as you allow Him to guide you and direct you. Have you been saved? Do you know for certain today, if you died today, that you would go to heaven? Do you need to come and trust Christ as your Savior today? As we prepare for this hymn of invitation, let's pray. Lord, I just pray that you would take this opportunity that's being offered to so many today that they will understand and appreciate your will for their life, that they'll obey your will. Those that need to be saved, Lord, help them to come and accept Christ today as their Savior. Those who need to come for baptism or for church membership or rededicate their life. Lord, whatever the need may be, help us to obey your will in this matter. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.